Thank you, Oscar. Um, so I hope you get all the chance to download and install all the, the things that you need to install. So did you get the chance to install NP Node? Does it work? Fine. Uh, OK, and uh, GitHub and so you have a Snapchat account and you have a GitHub account. OK, cool. Do you remember the password? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so let's first uh, build uh, an augmented reality experience using Lens Studio. So are you all familiar with Lens Studio? Not really? OK, so I will, I will show you and make it with you then. Um, so first, let's open Lens Studio. So when you open Lens Studio, normally it will ask you to um, log in to Snapchat. I should be already logged into Snapchat. Yeah, so that's a pop-up for um, updates, but I ask him to remind me later. Um, so let's create a new project, but we will start by using a template because the goal of the project today is not really to show you how to use Lens Studio, but it's more uh, about showing you how to use Lens Studio, how to publish and how to publish to the web. So we'll be very fast on, Lens, on the Lens Studio part. I'm clicking on Lens, all template on the right side of the screen and then I'm going to use one template that I like, which is the animated object template or animated something. I don't remember what it is. It's a, it's a template which uses a uh, world understanding, yeah. animated object template, this one. And we are going to use for that template um, a 3D model directly available inside the Snapchat library. So here you see the two, like the pandas and the, the elephant dancing, um, just to show you a little bit Snapchat around uh, Lens Studio for those who don't know. It's a tool that allows you to build your augmented reality experience. You have like a preview on the right side of the screen, which show you what it looks like when you try it on your phone. Uh, you have your scene at the middle. On the left side, you have your objects panel, so all the elements into your scene. And at the bottom here, you have all the assets that are present to your project. So let's find a new assets for Halloween, because it's going to uh, soon be Halloween. So let's find 3D model here. And then if I scroll down to the bottom, uh, there is this little skeleton here, which is very cute. Uh, you can import it, and it will directly download it and add it on your resources panel, top, bottom, left of your screen. We can remove the elephant object. We don't need it. So I'm just going to delete it. Uh, we can remove the panda and not the world object controller, just the, the panda just below it. And then we can drag and drop um, our skeleton into our scene, just inside world, the world object controller here. And as you can see on the bottom right, we have this little skeleton, our body for, the, for this tutorial. Um, then we should make it a little bigger because here it is very small compared to the other character before. Uh, so if you want to make it bigger, just click on the object in your object scene panel. And then on the right side, you have some elements that describes your object here. And you have the scale. So you just need to click this little button here and, and add like a scale and scale up all these, all these uh, axes. So let's make it uh, five times bigger. Yeah, that's, that's big enough. Or maybe it's too big, you know. Three is fine. Okay, cool. Let's uh, save it wherever you want. So let's say uh, Halloween. And I'm going to save it in my downloads. That's fair enough. On the camera kit for web, there is a, a, a difference uh, between like having like a front camera experience and a back camera experience in some configuration that I will show you. So that's the reason why I'm using this template, because today I want to show you how to use like a world uh, understanding experience. Uh, so that's why I'm using this project. And as you can see, if you want to go into more details, when you click on your camera here, uh, you have the device tracking uh, component here. So it tells you that the tracking mode here is surface, which will make it so that um, our little character here is, is tracked to the ground. Um, so I'm going to save the little update we made. And so we can publish this experience all together here. When you hit Publish Lens, top left, you click. So I have this pop-up, but you just hit Proceed. And then when it goes through 100%, it will automatically open my Lenses page. And now you can create new folder. 
you don't need to create new folder, but it's better to create new folder. Uh, select your organization, which should be uh, your um, Snapchat handle. And for the name of the folder, you can use whatever, but for this one, I'm just going to use Demo Day. And you hit Create Lens Folder. And then you have to select the lens folder you just created, so Demo Day. And uh, we hit Submit Lens here. Um, here you have some information that we need to fill. Uh, category, I choose scary because it's scary, skeleton, and then I don't remember this one, but we can choose other. Uh, tags, you don't need tags, I think. Um, then we can just hit submit lens now once you have filled like, uh, the category, which is the only, I think, thing that is required. And you should have this pop up, uh, this page showing up. Normally it takes like last time I tr yesterday I tried to took me like 10 minutes to get my lens validated. So I'm sure at the end of the of the tutorial we will be able to use uh, this this lens and publish it to the web. Yeah, there is an animation on the little skeleton, and I forget to tell you to check the animation. So I guess it won't be animated on your uh, example, but it, uh, you can go back later and just animate. You can still update it and okay. animate it. Anyway, we just uploaded a lens but I, because I wanted to show you really the process from Lens Studio to the website and to the publishing. So you do whatever you want on Lens Studio um, and then we will be able to publish it on the web and use it on Camera Kit. There is actually 10 functionalities that are not available from Lens Studio to Camera Kit for web and that you, you can check it on the Camera Kit website. Um, but there is it's very specific use case, it's very specific features that you don't really need right now. And the most important ones are going to be released in one or two weeks. It's a lens hint. Thank you uh, to our friend from the US. It brings us the knowledge from the US to Europe because we are always a little bit behind. Yeah. We still use rock and stick to light uh, fire and stuff. <laughs> anyway. Um, and now let's focus on the web app. So what we need to install here is Node.js, uh, VS Code, or whatever uh, other code editor that you have. Uh, you can use Notepad if you like, but yeah, anyway. Um, you also can use, uh, we also use GitHub, so you can use the desktop version of the CLI, and you will have to download the project content. If you click on this link here, you have some of the resources. The project content is what's in uh, here. It's a Google Drive folder, and you can just download it like this. It appears on your computer somewhere. For example, for me, it's here. Um, and just save it and keep it for the rest of the um, tutorial. So how to install Node.js? Doesn't matter the version, uh, as long as it's not like version one, uh, obviously. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, how to verify that Node.js is installed? If you have uh, Mac OS or Linux or whatever, you can just use command space, oh, that's on Mac. Uh, you can open a terminal uh, on whatever uh, Linux you are in and search for terminal. And when it will should be open uh, like a black or white window, um, and you can type in npm slash uh, dash v, and then it will um, show you the version of your Node package manager and Node dash v, which is give you the version of your Node.js. Um, I think the one that you should have installed today is version 20 or something like that. And on Windows, if you want to open the command line tool, like a terminal, you can press Windows and R, and then tap CMD, and you can type the two commands after you install Node.js. And you should have the same uh, display as I have on the right, which gives me the version of uh, the two tools that we are going to use. So now uh, let's use GitHub. Um, so GitHub, I've asked you to download the, um, the uh, GitHub desktop version, or you can use the CLI. Um, for the uh, then when you run it, uh, it will maybe ask you to uh, register and to login. So you have to hit login and you open it. Open the web page. You have to uh, to login on the web page and then you go back to the GitHub desktop tool, and you should be logged in. And then we're going to hit create a new repository on your hard drive. And you can type repository name and uh, be aware of the local path that you are going to use. So you can find your, um, your folder later on. Like I can show you, uh, I have uh, GitHub here installed. Um, 
you can also create a new repository here. Yeah, so you can type your name, descriptions, uh, you don't need, and then choose wisely the local uh, folder where you are going to install, uh, where you are going to create your GitHub folder. And please check initialize the repository with a readme when you create it. And then, so when that is done, so I'm going to create mine as well. Um, yeah, you can click it and you can hit create repository. So it will create a repository and then you should have this page appear. The goal is to go to the root folder of your GitHub uh, folder that you just created. So you can just hit show uh, folder. And so here I'm inside the folder I just created with uh, the GitHub desktop application. And so the goal here is co to copy paste uh, the project content we, uh, we, uh, we downloaded just before into that uh, folder here. So I'm going to find my, um, the file, I just, the camera kit demo main fol uh, folder that we just downloaded before. And it has some uh, element in it. Just copy or drag and drop all the element into um, that folder. And if you have a little pop-up saying like readme already exists, you can just hit replace or keep both, uh, no, just replace, fine, okay. So now here we have the core of our project. So that's something I've built and something I'm uh, sharing, sharing with you uh, to create this uh, website, this web application. You need a web server and you need like a package manager and stuff like that. Um, and for that as package manager, I use Webpack so on the example of um, of the um, of Snapchat, I think they use Vite, uh, so, but there is always like a different package manager. I think I like to use Webpack because it's very common. So if you have any trouble, any issues, you will always find help on the internet. Um, okay, so then s since you copied um, the folder content from the downloaded file into the GitHub fi GitHub folder, then you see that. On, the, on this left side, it shows you the modification that happens inside that folder. So when it's a, anyway, green plus, you've been added things. So you've, we've been adding a bunch of files to our GitHub files. So let's publish that online, even if this doesn't work for now, but at least we are saving something. So, so for those who already uh, know uh, GitHub, we're just gonna make a commit. And uh, I can just type like first commit. We don't need the description and you hit commit to main. And once this is committed, you can just publish a repository. So which will bring everything you've saved here online. Um, yeah, organization, uh, no. Description, no, demo skeleton, uh, yeah, okay. And um, don't keep this code private for one reason. You have to uncheck this box here because if you keep this repository private, you won't be able to generate a GitHub page. And we are going to use GitHub page to be able to uh, push online your code and, and push, publish it on the web. So create like a public repository and then I can hit publish. Cool. cool. So now let's go back to uh, our folder here, which the GitHub folder which contain our code and stuff. Um, on Windows, you can right click on the on the blank spot and said open terminal or open CMD, maybe something like that. I'm not sure. And on Mac, you can just right click on the um, on the path here at the bottom, right click and open in terminal. And if you don't see on Mac this um, this line above, you have to go on view and you have to show path bar here show path bar or com command uh, you know, option command p and right click here and i'm opening the terminal here if you um yeah if you do this you should be able to see github uh, demo skeleton but if you are on windows uh, there is something like this you can type uh, something like this i guess i'm not sure let me check <coughs> to see in which folder that you are and to verify yeah, something like that. Yeah. No, but it's not grave. Yes, yes, no. Yeah, if you see um, all the things you see here, uh, the colored, that's my setup of my terminal. Uh, so you don't need to, you shouldn't have the same thing. You, you should have something different. Just the most important thing is to be sure that you are on the, um, 
on the uh, demo skeleton folder or, the, or your git folder and to see also you can type ls and you should list you the same files and folders that I have listed here. I think it's the same command on Windows and on Mac and on Linux. And now what we can type, um, let's install our web server. So that's the reason why we installed a node, is to run the node, the, our, our server. Um, there's just one thing I need to... Uh, okay, uh, we need to modify first uh, this line here in these folders. So let's go back to our folder here. Okay, let's go back here uh, on our folder. And we need to uh, modify the package.json file. So right click on it and you can open, with, open it with, uh, I'm using VS Code. So if you can open it with VS Code, that would be good. Then we need to modify uh, this line here, line 19. Instead of having nine, let's write 12, which is like the latest version and save your file. So on Mac, I can save with Command S or I can go on File and save. And once this is done, we can type npm install. And it will install all the de dependencies and everything that we need. So we've created the GitHub, we've signed up, and we are now installing. And then if you want to run the server, so also the reason why I use Webpack is because they, are, they have a built-in web server, which is very useful. Um, and something very important to notice for the one who knows a little bit about web servers, if you want to debug on your phone and access a camera, you need a, a web server that, is, uh, that has a certificate, which is HTTPS and not HTTP, because if it's just HTTP, you won't be able to access a camera. So if you want to debug, we need uh, even uh, if it's on the local, on our computer, not online. We like to debug with our phone, and for that we need HTTPS. You can test it local with this server I'm, I'm giving you, uh, yeah. Because uh, if you open the Webpack configuration, um, oh no, not the Webpack configuration, sorry, the package.js, the JS, sorry. There is a command line for the server to run, and there is this uh, option HTTPS. So the cool thing is like Webpack will help you to run a, a HTTPS server and it works the same way on Windows and on Mac, so it's great. Um, so now we just have to type the command npm run serve and it will start our server. And you might have some pop-ups, just say OK. And on the, the log box, top uh, left corner, you can enter your, uh, you can click on it, uh, scroll up, and then you see it will give you the URL of your, of your server that you just started on your machine. Because npm run serve will run locally a web server on your machine, so it helps you to debug your project. Because if you want to run like a web project, we need a web server. So that's what Webpack is doing. Yeah. No, on Webpack, I just showed you, but you don't need to change anything on the Webpack config. And so after npm install? You type npm run serve, okay. uh, like this one here. Okay. Let me know if you have any issue on that part. <coughs> there is a bunch of messages. You don't really care. Just need to scroll to the top and, and get your IP address and the URL of your project. So if I want to test it, I can go here. Yes, it works as well. And the port, at the end, you need to type a port, like um, double dot, I don't know what to say in English, a semicolon, right? Oh, colon. colon. Thank you. And 9000. And then hit enter. So you might have this pop-up, which is scary pop-up, but don't, don't worry, you are on your own machine, so you won't hack yourself. I hope so. <laughs> and just hit advanced and then go to next step and you see proceed to localhost. And so you will see this page. Nothing happened because we're missing a part of the code. But at least if you see that, it means that it's working. Uh, there is a little tool on the web called uh, Development Console. You don't, need to, you don't need to check, but I just want to show you uh, right now what we have on our page. We have just a tag called a, a div with an image in it, which is the, the logo uh, of Snapchat. And it's exactly 
what you have on your folder. So let me close my VS Code, go back to the folder of the project. Oh no, go back to VS Code, for example. Um, I can here open like a folder and I'm, go I'm going to open the, um, the folder of the GitHub that we just created, the demo skeleton. So I'm opening it. And so that's what we have in our folder here on the, le on the left side. So we had our package JSON that we just modified, you know, version 12 instead of version 9. And then we have a source folder, we have a node module folder, and we have a docs folder. The node module folder, we don't really have to take care of it right now. It's just when we hit npm install, it just generates a node module and it installs a lot of things that are needed for this project. The source file is where we are going. There is a main.js file. It's a JavaScript file. That's where we are going to type our JavaScript code to be able to have this lens online. And that I will show you uh, in a minute. And inside the docs file, it's actually the content of our website. Because all of this is our uh, web server, um, our web application, which a bunch of tools that actually help you to build your public profile, your public folder containing the content of your website that will be delivered online to everyone. So when you go to this URL, you're actually downloading the content from the public profile. We have a packet.js, so this one is also automatically generated by Webpack, so we don't really have to take care of it. But something important to notice is that everything that we are going to type in into main.js will be actually integrated automatically into package.js. Okay, uh, there is a lot of things, we don't need to take care of it. Um, index.html is actually the, the, the content uh, of our web page. So like you can see, I just showed you on my web page here. When I inspect it, I have this architecture here. Uh, and as you can see, it's kind of the same as our, the architecture of this file here. So actually what, I've, what the localhost URL showed me is actually the content of this public folder. And we have here our image here, which is inside the folder assets and which is called powered by snap. So if I go to the folder assets here, you can see there is the powered by snapshot images. And so the cool thing here is we are going to run the lens that we've built on Lens Studio on that web page. And on top of this lens, we are still inside our own web page. So I can add whatever image I want. I can add like a login. I can add the menu. I can add a complete web page or whatsoever. So we, that's what's very interesting. And actually, uh, like I said, uh, said to you before, what Snapchat is, what Camera Kit is doing is creating this environment, WebAssembly environment, in which it can run his own lenses and render the lenses inside an HTML canvas. And the canvas is here. So something important, if, you, if we want to see our lens, we need our canvas to be visible on the page. So I've done a little bit of CSS here, uh, which uh, gives some information to our canvas. And the only thing I'm doing is just putting this canvas full screen. So whatever is happening, uh, and when Snapchat is going to use this canvas to write, the, to write the lens, I would say, on our screen, to display it, it will display on the canvas and our canvas is full screen. So we will be able to see it on the web page. So that's the most important that you have to know for now. So I know it's a lot uh, of information, but I've tried to give you for the one who are not developers, uh, but I've tried to give you like a package that contains everything that you need to actually at least run one lens on a web page and you to be able to modify a little bit the HTML and stuff to change logos and, and stuff like that. So let me go back to the presentation so I know where I'm going. So we've reached the localhost, we have access to our web page, we see the powered by Snapchat logo. Now let's deep dive into the code. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, have our website to use Snapchat tools to be able to run the lens, like I showed you before, uh, the, to, to run the lens. So we import that from Snap Camera Kit. I'm just going to next line and we have to import Bootstrap Camera Kit, which will actually uh, start the WebAssembly virtual machine. 
we have to use create media stream source and transform to 2D. So bootstrap camera kit here, create media stream source and transform 2D. Yeah, great. Yeah, teamwork. Actually, I think I have like GitHub Copilot running, so maybe I can do something like, uh, yeah. yeah. Just, let's try. <laughs> uh, no, it stops. <laughs> Sometimes it works, but yeah. Um, so we are going to create like a new function, I don't remember. I think I can run it that way, like this. So we create this uh, new function. Actually, I think I can remove function. No, function. Yeah, okay. And then afterward, what do we have? Um, we have to use, so we have to bootstrap our camera kit. And we're gonna use the, the API token, but later on I will show you where to get your API token. So for now, we don't need it. Uh, how do we call it? So camera kit, cool. I have the autocomplete. Um, API token. And later on we will add our own API token, but for now we can just type API token. We're gonna get it later on. Kit create session. So the create session will actually create our, our render pipeline when we do that. We need to have our session to write into our canvas. So we can just get our canvas that we have in our um, in our HTML page. And it's session .output .live. So we bootstrap our camera kit um, by running the WebAssembly. We create a new rendering pipeline to be able to run uh, and to render our, um, our lens. And we uh, set the output of our rendering pipeline to our, the canvas that we, uh, that we created in our HTML. Um, then we just need to now load the lens from Snapchat, because it's published on Snapchat side, so we need to get it and load it. So for that, we need to, uh, there are different ways of doing it. I'm, I'm using a way that I'm getting a lens folder, which contains one or multiple lenses, and we are getting, um, uh, and then later on we, from all the lenses that we get, we're gonna pick one ID uh, inside that list. So, Lens repository. What's the list? Yeah. I will show you later oh, okay. on how to create um, a, a group of lens oh. on Snapchat Camera Kit and then load this group of lens and get one or two or three lenses. That's like I show you on the example before. There, there was a drop down menu with like a lot of different examples. All of the examples are inside the same lens group. And this actually, when you will, con you, I will show you later, but when you connect the um, Snapchat Camera Kit Web, there is a group and a template that is already created with 23 lenses, which are made by Snapchat. So it's a good example to try and to start. Uh, camera Kit Lens Repository, Load Lens Group.
And here, um, it's just some, no, it's a, a group of ID, so it's an array anyway. Uh, here, that's we gonna get later, but it's our group ID. Yeah. Here? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so nicely, uh, uh, Bastien. Um, but yeah, there is a, on the light 10, you need to add a weight here in front of the, oh, sorry, in front of the camera kit here. This keyword, a weight. I can always, after, give you this and copy paste uh, what we wrote here, just in case. And then we need to um, get the video stream from the, from the webcam or from the, your camera or your phone to be able to give it and feed it to a snapshot. Yeah, I will, I will write that fast and then so we can, um, I can just show you one screen and I don't have to go from one screen to another. Yeah, I will, I will uh, I'm just, uh, I will show you, I'm just writing that down. Okay, I guess that's it. So what it does, like I said, um, start the rendering engine on the way at the top, on, uh, on all like the three lines, uh, get the lenses that we need from the repository, um, get the, um, the camera feed, create a media stream source, so that's something that Snapchat needs from the camera feed uh, to be able to feed it to the, um, to the rendering pipeline. So we set the source here, and we set the source render size, and we play the, the experience. We run the session, we, we start the rendering engine. Um, so there's one thing, if you use a camera, uh, the camera, the front camera, if it's a mirror display, uh, when you, yeah, it will feel weird when you uh, turn your screen left and right, so you have to mirror. So it doesn't feel like, so it actually mirrors your face. And on this example, we start with front, but then afterward, I'm gonna show you to change to back, how to change to back. So we have both of them. And actually the only thing you will need to change later on when you, uh, when, if you want to upload different lenses, is your API token here, the group ID here, and uh, front and back camera here. So there is four, four things to change on the code every time you want to, um, not every time, actually, at least two, two things to change on the code every time you want to change from one lens to another. Uh, and if it's back and front, you need to change also uh, this line here and also this line here, because this line uh, will get the front camera on the phone. So we want, uh, if we use the back camera, we want it to get the back camera and not the front camera. Yeah, well, you still have to go through some coding, uh, but I guess maybe in the future, you will maybe not need to go through coding. But actually, if you like, <coughs> if you do like one experience just to, to test or like a demo, you don't necessarily need to go through a lot of code. But you see when you do something on the web, um, if you want to have like a project production ready for a client and stuff like that, so it's getting a bit more complex 
Because for example, when you want to deliver something to a client, you like to have like a landing page and not go on the web page and directly see like a pop-up saying like, hey, accept the camera. So you need to postpone this part. So you need to have like some text say, hello, you're on like which, which brand website and then do you want to start the experiment? So you have to hit the button, start the experiment. And then afterward, you have kind of a loading uh, that will ask for the assets to load or whatever, or the lens to load. And then uh, at that moment, you want to show the pop-up with camera. Or be and before, maybe the pop-up, you said, be careful, we're going to ask the camera, but we are not hackers, or something like that. Um, yeah. So, and then it became a bit more complex. But for the testing purpose and for demo or whatever, this example, I think, works great. So code is done. Great. Now we need to find our credentials. Um, so for that, there is a little video to watch. So we're going to watch it together. Uh, so let's fast forward a little bit. If you have not yet requested access to the camera, you will receive an email. So you should have received this email, right? OK. Uh, did you all go through that email already? So you selected the organization. I guess. Have you all done that? OK, so you, you can maybe skip a little bit. Create an organization. Did you create the organization? OK. Um, did you enable new app? OK. So here. Um, which website should we go? Let me share the link. Yeah, on developer portal. Dev portal. Dev portal. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, so, oh, sorry. So if you go to this website, you will be able to create a new app. Yeah, devportal.snap.com. Um, so guys, you should have like uh, your uh, pollution or staging a, um, API token. And the thing that you need to do is like uh, st use the staging one, go back to your code. And when it's written API token, just paste the key here. It's a long key here. And you can save. Yeah, and save your files. Uh, file and save here. So now we have our API token. So now we need to test, uh, we need the lens to test our code. Uh, what we are going to do, we are going to directly use the, I wanted to show you uh, first to use like a, um, uh, lens from the camera kit demo, but we don't have much time, so we are going to directly use our own lens that we just created. So normally, maybe none of you have received an email saying that your lens has been validated. So w let's all go to camera kit dot snapshot uh, dash camera dash kit dot snapshot dot com. <laughs> Sorry, um, and so you s you should see this page here, and you should already have one um, one group here called camera kit mobile sample lenses. That's the one I've sh used earlier when I showed you the example with all the 23 lenses inside. So that's a public template that you can use. But let's create our own like group for this project. So on the top right corner, you have a button called New Lens Group. So if you click on it, are you all on this page? OK, so New Lens Group. Let's uh, try add a fancy name uh, if it's and we use the scary Halloween that we just created, or whatever. I have a lot of tests, but yeah. And you, we hit at the bottom, create new group. And don't forget to check the, the lens you just created that has been validated. If you don't have this lens, because yours are not, uh, haven't been validated, uh, you can select portal one uh, or then create new group. So then when I go on my list, I have the new demo group I just created today. So it's fancy name, sorry. And when I click on it, I see the lens group ID here. That's the group ID that we are going to load on our project. And then we will access to the first lens of this group. So we have our group ID. So you know where to put the group ID. Uh, it's here. It's written right there. So here we can replace and just type in our group ID. OK? and just save it. Um, be sure to type le here, it's zero on line 15, because there is only one lens in the group. And the first line is the lens number zero, anyway. Um, so now that I have an API token, I, ha I have a lens group, I can test my 
project. Uh, but uh, don't forget that it's a back camera experience, so we need to change the code to be able to accept the back camera experience. So there is a few things to change. Uh, there is this line first to go back and um, on our documentation to see what line to change and how to change it. So we created a group, um, <coughs> whatsoever. We went further than that. Yeah. So uh, we need to change this to lens number zero. That's what we did. Uh, we need to use the camera type back when we create the media stream source. So here, media stream source camera type should be back. And because we are using the back camera, you don't we don't need the transform here. So we can actually remove this line, line number 20. Here. Oh, sorry. Here. So it should look like this now. And you save. And then we need to ch change also this line with this, the video. Oh. Sorry, get user media video with the facing mode environment. So here, we create a new object, facing mode environment, and we save. So be aware of the brackets. There is one bracket here and one here. What does that mean, facing mode environment? It will change the camera from front camera to the environment, the back camera. So there is, I don't know, there is different Naming, yeah. Some call it back camera, environment camera, world camera, maybe, or I don't know. And actually, I was impressed because when you look at all the cameras that is on your phone, you I can actually access to all of the cameras, and they all have different angle of views and different. It's that's very interesting. Um, so yeah, let's let's test our project now because um, I don't know if there is any errors or whatsoever. So the server is running. Apparently, uh, there is seems to be no error. Uh, I need to take my... So what you can do is like when you are on this on your terminal with these green windows, um, you can scroll up to the top and it will give you your IP v4 uh, URL of your website. And so if you are on the same Wi-Fi, you, could, you should be able to access it through uh, your uh, typing the, the URL of the page. So for example, um, I'm trying to copy, but I, uh, apparently I can't copy it. So just so I'm going to type it with my phone here. HTTPS uh, 10 56 27 Here. So I also have the same visit website. Visit this website to ask for the camera. Agree. Uh, yeah, orientation. And then I sh I sh you should be able to see the little skeleton. So if I stream my phone, yeah, I sh I'm seeing the little like uh, skeleton. So mine is animated because I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you about uh, checking the animation box. Uh, but it should look like this and it's very cute. Dancing on your table. Yeah. You can make very big. Uh, so all of that in the web, on the web, with the plane, the tracking, which is, which works actually great. It has improved a lot since the last time I tried. So it's very impre impressive. I can like, literally just go back. Yeah, it works well. So, okay. Um, because the cool thing is being able to have it online, your, your work. So, um, so we modified the code to have the back camera working. So that is done. Uh, no, now we need to push all our work onto GitHub, okay? So let's go back to the GitHub um, application here. So we should have like a lot of changes on the left. Actually, we are 18,000 changes here. Um, and so what we did is we need to write a new name to our commit. So let's type like um, end of the day commit, anyway, doomsday. Uh, and then we hit commit to main. So it should take a little bit of time maybe. And then from GitHub, we'll be able to publish online the code. Um, and then we hit push to origin. So, okay, 
Now uh, we can view it on GitHub. So you should click on view on GitHub. So we arrive on our GitHub page here and then we see our code that we did today. We are publishing on the public repository our API key. Normally you don't publish, it, publish publicly your API keys. Um, also you normally don't publish your node module and stuff like that, but for the purpose of this test uh, we made it simpler. simpler. But actually, for example, your API key is still visible for everyone who inspects your website because it, will, it, it needs to be there. So there is other specificities that you have to do when you actually really publish a website on the Snapchat, uh, webs on, on the Snapchat website to make it so even if people use your API keys, they can use it everywhere. Uh, so then when you're on, the, on, the, um, on this GitHub page, we have to go on settings. And also this, on this example, which is a free example to publish a website online, only works if your GitHub profile is public. Then we go to pages on the left side of the screen. And here you have to choose a source from where we want to deploy. So it's going to be deployed from a branch. Uh, now we have to choose a branch. So we only have one, which is the main branch. And our, uh, in the content of our website, like I told you before, is in our docs folder. That's also why it's named docs, so that it automatically knows it. And we have to hit save. So GitHub pages source has been saved. And then now if we go on the tab called actions on the left of our screen, we should see a workflow running, which is our first deploy. And once this is done, you can go to actions. <coughs> and then you can see that there is a workflow running and the page is building. And apparently our page is, has been built, so it's, it's done, it's deployed. So that's cool. And if I click on it, uh, I have to open it with my phone. So yeah, actually the, the last thing we need to do, and we didn't do it before, and I'm sorry about that, I forget with this uh, Webpack server, um, it, do, did, it did not properly build the package.js if we just write npm run serve. So before publishing to, um, to GitHub, you need to do npm run build. So it will rebuild the package.js and then we will upload the new package.js online. And the reason why we were on front camera with some errors is because we had the package.js from uh, earlier before. So the one without the IP token and whatsoever, so we had two errors because of that. Uh, so npm build, uh, npm run build before you publish on GitHub. And you should be able to see this little guy dancing around. And sorry for the delay. Yeah, that's it.